Josh, I mean, you come from the world of cooking and being a chef and, and you interface, I can imagine, with a lot of different aspects of the food system doing that and grow Oya. So I'm curious your take on how you see the food system. I understand you're also in Canada, so I don't know the difference between you know the USA and Canada's food system as well as you might. It's, it's funny. I always talk about food like, like a web. It's definitely not linear and there's so many different components. It's, it's always been complex when it should be simple. I love that you talked about origin. I mean, humanity used to be it, like, that's all it was, was survival. How are you going to eat for the day? How are you going to eat for the next day? You know, I, I spent the high school years learning to be a chef, got my chef certificate, moved to Europe, cooked all over, fancy restaurants, big hotels. This went hand in hand with Big Egg. You know, it became less and less about the diversity and the regional procurement of food and more the the mass control. You know, we, we began to see products traveling farther and farther, bigger and bigger impacts on the environment, less and less for those uh, small and diverse farmers and less and less nutrient content in these ingredients. Witnessing that firsthand, it, it was great to be up at a university that was fighting against that. Big institution cooking like a university, a school, a government agency. Most of the time it is controlled big contract and University of British Columbia has privately run its its own food program. They're one of the largest food service employers in Western Canada. Their MO was to increase as much local as, as possible. And so I began this process of like, well, why local? What makes local better? That kicked off sort of the, the deep dive. It, di it did. And I mean, I think through the 2000s, at least in the food and food industry realm, you started to have all these sexy long table dinners, these farm table dinners. Everybody wanted to, you know, dine with chickens at their feet or under a willow tree and, and have these real fancy chef dinners. But there was always more to it than that, what these chefs were trying to say and what they were trying to do. And, and you know, from a, a nutritional standpoint, fresh is best, right? Like we know that the nutrient Absolutely. density is there. But any chef will tell you too that fresh and peak ripeness, the flavor profile is there as well. So the mm -hmm. two of those things combined, right, it, it makes it a no-brainer to be eating that way. The, the problem is majority of our food is, isn't that. It's not peak ripeness and and it's yeah. certainly not even us in like western canada here california arizona and and mexico you you feed us it's scary how little local production we have for local plates and and local mouths we were talking with um i had a fellow canadian tyler heppel on the show oh yeah he goes my Potato tie. Yeah, potato, or, pie. Pota potato tie. Potato tie. Potato tie. What? A um, we had we had him on, and you know he was he was saying basically the same thing. I mean, they grow enough potatoes on their family farm that without the production that they alone produce in their region, there is a food gap or a hungry gap. I think it's called J just because nothing else is being grown up there, which is really it's really surprising. And then I guess the other observation I was I was thinking about when you were sharing your chef story was. It seems like, and and I can corroborate this a little bit with when I used to grow and sell microgreens to chefs, there was a time in which the chefs basically didn't seem to care where it came from if the flavor and the visual appeal was good. So flavor profile good, visuals good, price good, I'm buying it, right? Uh -huh. Now it does seem like they're saying, it. it I would prefer if, if it came from a more local source, but it is also a business and the economics of, of that has to work. And so if we have such crazy economies of scale and let's say growing lettuce in the central Valley of California, then how am I even going to beat them out as a small Vancouver lettuce farm? It's hard to say. And, and maybe you have to sell the story, like, look, like this is truly a better product. It's not comparable on price. I'm not trying to, to be the lowest uh, bidder here on this contract, but yeah, it's, in, it's very interesting. And it, it does seem like you know a fresh tomato is simply better than anything you can you can buy in. It's not even close, 100%. and it doesn't even have to be a good variety. It could be like a medium tier variety, and, and and fresher. It's still much better than like a nice heirloom that's been carted from New York or something like that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's it's interesting you brought up Thai too. There's a whole other element of what's happening to the farmer. And, and in Canada, the median age of a farmer is up there. We're losing farmland like there's no tomorrow. The cost of farming when it's small scale is is so expensive. 
And and I know it's a lot of the same trends in, in the United States. I mean, it's getting harder and harder to get local food in an industry where it's more and more important all the time to keep it alive. Fast forward to COVID and COVID was a very interesting lesson in what it meant to talking about these food systems and, and where your food's coming from. It wasn't just the toilet paper uh, that people were stockpiling or that uh, at food access was being compromised like left, right, and center. And so once people were waking up to that kind of supply chain disruption, I think the awareness around food, like where it comes from, what is it? And this overall question about health, like we are what we eat, right? This, like these elements were just so interesting in recent years. And I, I'm truly convinced that 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 played a big role in a, a surge of, of new gardeners in the space too. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, it, it, I, I, I don't even think so. I know so because when the lockdowns happened somewhere around early March of 2020, Epic was much smaller than it is now, but it was still decently sized. And I remember waking up and talking to my small team at the time and saying like, it's go time, not in the sense of like, I was excited about the crisis or anything like that, but the interest in gardening was surging because everyone was stuck at home and was looking for things to do. So like my baker friends, my carpenter friends, all these home hobby sort of creators that I, I keep company with, were all experiencing the same thing. I think the interesting thing about gardening though, is that it, it stayed um, a habit. It stayed a hobby. Someone who got into it had enough time to actually really devote to it. They weren't as time poor as as perhaps you were in those early days, right? And there was nothing else to do. Um, so they actually dove in deep and understood it on a more fundamental level. So it went from hobby to something that was actually part of their life. Uh, and in, in that way, if there was to be a silver lining about something like that, then that certainly would be one of them, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. And and what you were talking about, you know, somebody getting a tomato in March from Maine or Vermont or from, you know, these different areas coming through. Once you've spent a couple of seasons growing your own food and the cost of it, like there's a huge cost component and that food access component to, hey, where are my organic vegetables <laughs> coming from? And yeah. and so for the gardener to be able to control that, that is like you know, you are poking big food sideways. You're you're not being dictated to what a bunch of carrots is worth or yeah. how expensive that romaine lettuce is for your Caesar. It's 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 now, well, wait a minute, I can grow it. It's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna taste better, uh, and it's gonna be more nutrient dense. Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.